FTL is a space adventure, a journey through space, and the journey uh, includes traversing eight sectors of the universe. Each sector is divided up into several star systems. It looks like this. Here, this is one sector, sector, and it says, and inside the sector, as I said, you have several star systems. That show up as points that you can fly to, or nodes, I, I refer to them uh, rather. And um, you always start out inside a sector. At the left side, as you can see here, our little ship is way to the left. And you make your way through that sector, jump after jump, and hope to get to the exit beacon over here, which usually is at the right side, and you should... Uh, right side, and you should... Uh, take special care on hard that the exit is on in a, in a conveniently far on uh, on the note that is conveniently far on the right right so you have the power to restart um, a, a play through at the start and if you see this exit beacon being like over here or over here that is not good enough you need an exit beacon that is far to the uh, right why? Because you are on the run. You are on the run from the rebel fleet. You are a member of the Federation. And the Federation is currently losing a war against the evil, evil rebels. And the rebels own most of the universe already. And you will see later on, after we made a few jumps, that the rebel fleet is coming in from the left as a big red blob. And it is continuously um, traversing this star system from the left to the right. Jump after jump, it uh, gets even deeper and deeper into the star system. And you are on the run and you have to uh, stay in front of it, right? To not get caught by the rebels, right? And you have to uh, find a good path through this star system so that you reach the exit beacon just one jump before the rebel fleet catches up to you that would be the most efficient way to do this so this is the more grand strategy thing you have to do this eight times and then you are coming against the uh, rebel fleet mothership and hopefully can free the federation from the evil menace so but how how is it played what happens at these nodes over here when you jump to them well you will see your ship here and you can come across enemy ships that you have to battle or an event will trigger at this uh, special location or you will jump into hazardous surroundings like um, there could be a pulsar which most of the time means the end of the playthrough uh, you can jump into a uh, sun that uh, gives out uh, gives out heavy sun flares you can jump into asteroid fields you can jump into iron storms and so and so on and so on uh, you can uh, follow distress signals, you can find shops where you can buy new stuff, and so on. So yeah, there is a, a vari variety of things that might happen at these nodes. And that is uh, what makes FTL uh, such uh, an interesting game. So let's go through the, the heart real quick so that you know what you see here. Let's start in the upper left corner. You see this uh, green bar over here, these are my hull points. If they, they are currently at 30, if they are reduced to zero, our ship explodes and the run through is over. Below that, you see a display for shields. They show the current level of your shields and um, how many shields are active. So at the moment we have level one shields, only one bubble here. And there is a blue dot in it, that means that one level of shields is currently active. If we, if we continue to improve on our shield levels, let's say two, and we got hit by a laser, by one laser, you will see um, two bubbles and only one dot. Two bubbles, bubbles because our maximum shield level is two, but we got hit by one laser. One shield has been deducted or subtracted from this total of two, and then we will only have one active shield and two maximum levels of shield. Once we go deeper into shields, I will show you again. Right now, what you need to know is this ship has level one uh, maximum shields installed and it is currently working. Below that, we have a small, um, we have a small display that reads evade and oxygen and then some percentages uh, beneath uh, next to it. 
oxygen should always be um, above zero percent for obvious reasons because that is the stuff that we are breathing we are humans after all <coughs> and evade gives you the chance that our ship evades an enemy shot it's as easy as that and currently we have evade 15 percent evade is governed by working pi by a working piloting station and by a working engineering station so both stations contribute to evading so if I were, let's say, if I were to not pilot um, the piloting station, I would order the pilot out of the piloting station, then the piloting station would be unmanned and evade would drop to zero. If we don't have a pilot, we cannot evade, right? So we'll put him back in on there. And then we can have a look. It's currently Jordi and Jordi will stay in the piloting sector. Um, Jordi is, uh, is our pilot and we can actually hover over Jordi here in this display and it shows us Jordi's skills So each person can have six skills or yeah six skills skills and um, Currently they are all at zero right, but the more we are moving on we will um, Increase our skills in certain aspects here and if we reached a certain threshold in piloting, for example, then Jordi will add to the evade percentage if he gets to level one piloting, right? Uh, at the moment, um, the piloting skill at level zero will add five evasion. If we get one more level, we will add seven in total. This is how this works, right? The same goes for engineering. Uh, I think Classical wanted to go here into engineering so Dark Daedalus will handle the weapons this will be our layout we save the layout here and then if we move peoples away from our stations we can just with the click of one button send everybody back to where we, where we save them that's these two buttons here so that is but this is not the only thing that um, goes into evade you also have to power your engines piloting is always powered but you have to power your engines, you, give, you have to give them power, power manually. And as we can see here, we have, um, this is the engine station. And uh, we have maximum level 2 in engineering. But currently we only have one bar of energy in there, that is uh, shown here by this green bar. And if you click on it, we can put another energy bar in it, and now we have two levels of uh, engineering powered and that gives an, a, an additional 5% to evade so as you can see here we increased our evasion level to 20% and this is a, a mini game so to speak of the game how to distribute your and uh, your uh, maximum energy into the different systems so that your um, ship works properly Yeah, I think that's a good idea to... I explained this here, so let's get back. Let's get to this here in more detail. We have currently on this ship shield systems, engine systems, med bay, uh, our um, oxygens, our ox oxygen rooms, oxygen tanks, and we have our weapon systems. These are our, the main systems here where I have to distribute the energy in between. And well, I always want to have my weapons <coughs> powered. So, and as you can see here, this is the amount of free energy that we still have and the maximum free energy that we have. That is the size of our reactor. If I were to unpower everything, you can see... Oh, uh, let's power oxygen though. Um, if I were to power ev unpower everything, you can see this is the um, maximum amount of energy that we have. And I take this amount of energy here over to my systems here to power them up, right? So let's get this energy back into our shields, into our um, evasion, and into our uh, weapons over here. <coughs> so you can see I used up all my energy and I have no, not enough energy left to power Mad Bay. But that's okay because all my crew is uh, currently at 100 health. So that's fine, I don't need it. I don't need to power it. Alrighty, so as I said at the start, this ship here starts out with the... Weapon systems burst laser 2 and Artemis missile system pre-installed and that's actually pretty good. The burst laser tour is 
arguably the best weapon in the game. So yeah, you are getting a, a very good weapon system right from the start. The Kestrel A is the starter ship. That is, um, that is the ship that you start out with from the start. Lots of starts in this sentence. So um, that's why they make it... That's why they give you a very good weapon at the start, so that you, you know, don't run into too many problems at the start. On hard, they don't care so much uh, anymore, right? And on hard, they proceed to, um, you know, to throw everything at you right from the start. But when you start out on normal or easy, uh, the Burst Laser 2 is uh, so OP that you will have a nice and easy uh, start in FTL. I, uh, so I explained this, you can put them on auto, auto fire here, the weapon system or not, just to your liking, to your liking. Then here, in the lower, on the lower right, you have subsystems. What uh, the difference between, uh, between main systems and subsystems is that the subsystems don't take energy from your reactor. They are always powered, right? And these include piloting, sensors and doors. Um, you get benefits if you go deeper into the subsystems. I will go... Yeah, I will tell you right now. If you click here on ship, you have all the... You see all the systems again that you have installed and the subsystems and the size of your reactor. All in the one window here. And for example, if you have piloting, you can see it is uh, right now on level 1. If you go deeper into it, um, like if you go to level 2, then the piloting don't doesn't need a pilot anymore. It will work um, autonomously and uh, will on level 2 will give 50% of the evasion that you would normally have without a pilot. And uh, on level 3, it will give 80% of the evasion that we would have with a pilot and so on so on and you also get ben benefits for sensors and doors I will go into that if I were to um, you know go deeper into them yeah and then you can also upgrade uh, the maximum reactor size that is self-explanatory and you can go deeper into shields engines med bay o2 and weapons right now while we are in this window here we have two more tabs we have we can look at our crew and that is actually the hope for you guys, because if we get more, 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 and more crew onto our ship, he, this is the place where we can rename them. So uh, this is where you come in, guys, later on. <coughs> and the third tab is the equipment that we have currently installed. There is not only weapons; there is also a, a drone system that we can install. We can have three different augmentations to our ship. And we have a cargo bay um, that is un currently only spaced, uh, that uh, currently has only four. Sp wow, I think I explained everything. Wow, I went through the, I, I'm through, I'm through the hut. Nice. Oh, not, not exactly. There are a few little things that I didn't explain. Here we have two buttons. Uh, here you can open and close all doors like this. And close again. This will come in handy later on if when we get boarded so that we can, you know, close the door in front of the intruder's noses and stuff like that. This is actually one of the benefits to go deeper into the door system uh, because at the current level, at level 1, doors open to everyone. If we go deeper into that, then doors will only open to us. That's the difference, for example. And up here, I um, neglected the scrap display this display over here that shows zero right now this is the space currency that everyone accepts it's called scraps and uh, yeah with that you pay for upgrades that you make here and you pay for um, items that you can buy at shops and more fuel and stuff like that and this is actually what I also uh, didn't tell you yet these three little displays here these are your resources that you have access to from left to right um, we have fuel, we have missiles, and we have drone parts. Fuel is obvious. Each, each jump that you make here from star system to star system takes one fuel. It's as easy as that. And um, each missile that you shoot with your installed missile systems, like the Artemis, uh, takes one missile. Each shot. And last but not least, if you have a drone control system, if you launch a drone, it will also take one drone part each 